Welcome everybody to Arizona Real Estate News. I'm your host, Rick McComb with Pat McMaster's Price Mortgage and these wonderful ladies down below here, Jackie and Ruby with Century 21. Hi. Arizona Hi. Foothills, good evening. What's going on? Hello, Rick. Anything ladies. exciting? <laughs> Nobody's traveling today? Getting ready for vacation. Oh, really? Oh, that's right. You're going to be going to California. So Yeah, leave Saturday. Yeah, I'm getting ready to bug out uh, next week myself, but I will still be I'll still be on here and we will uh, continue to feed people numbers. So today I'm going to walk you through quickly where uh, where we're at. I don't need to hit that button again, but take a look at this. This is uh, this lags a few days. So it actually shows for 13,513, but we're over 15,000 now. But 1,686 of those are new construction that actually weren't in those numbers last year. So I think we kind of need to consider that when we look at these inventory numbers, but this is all price points. Now, here's the thing that really jumps out. So when the interest rates spiked up, the move up buyer got crunched and the move up buyer plays in this price range. And look at that, 2,283 versus last year, we had 527 listings. And as uh, we start getting and seeing the data from June, as it comes out and starts hitting the news, I expect this number to, to start to skyrocket. And uh, that's the number I really wanna concentrate on. Now, I went and I looked and I said, well, how many of those are new construction? Only 300, which surprised me. I thought that number would be a lot, a lot bigger. But that price range is the move up buyer. The over a million is not getting hit that hard. It might, here's the Crawford Market Index. You can see that this is demand. And demand is now down to 95.6, where it was hanging pretty comfortably above 100. Had a couple dips here. Back in May of 2020, we all know why demand dropped there. Uh, there was a curfew. And then now we're back down there again. The supply is trying to come up. So you're hearing a lot of talk about supply is up 153%. You know what I say. Uh, large percentage of a small number is still a small number. So overall, this is where the Crawford Market Index lands and it's coming up about, oh, 180 here. We expect that we'll be in a balanced market probably by next week. Here's days of inventory. In 11 weeks, we've gone from 17 days of inventory to 47.8. Wow. So that's what's going on in the market. and. Keep in mind that um, if I show the seven day moving average here, that it's still got that 4th of July number in it. So it's gonna skew yeah. things, but you can see we're going down. And instead of having this normal little dip down and dip up, we got, this looks like my EKG. <laughs> so it, it's weird, but not only are contracts down, the listings are down, but we need, this won't shake out until next Tuesday because we got to flick that Monday off the desk. and. You know, school starts in Chandler on July 20th and it starts everywhere else about the first week of August. So, you know, people just aren't doing a lot of consuming when it comes to uh, real estate right now. And when they do want to buy, they have to get a mortgage. So, Pat, what say you? What say me? Well, first of all, your prediction, <laughs> on, you said the balanced market was going to be what, August, September? Yeah. Yep. I was I wrong. Mean, uh <laughs> Uh, rates rates have stabilized. I mean, uh, we saw, but today we had a really terrible day yesterday. It was down about 70 basis points, the 10-year bond. This this number was uh, minus 69. Today it was minus 14, so we're seeing a little bit of comeback on the rates. But we saw the 10-year go back to around 3, 3.0, you know, right around right at 3. Um, you know, this last, this, this has been a nice comeback, and, you know, rates have come down from the low, sixes to about the low to mid fives in this range right here so they've kind of balanced out they're trying to make a push they obviously we saw some resistance you can see how this bond market will trade against these lines these lines are always resistance levels these this line this line this line so you can see how it's been trending against these lines and you can always when you have a run up you can kind of tell if somebody's locking short term i can always tell when like right here like okay we're hitting against this res resistance if i had like somebody yesterday or the day before, before this big move. So this tracking these rates is 
is uh, very helpful. But right now we've got the problem we've got with rates is that we've got two things kind of battling back and forth, and we're going to see this battling back the next several months. Is you got inflation, and then you got recession fear. So you got, I mean, before what six months ago we were like inflationary fears, like oh, we're, what are the Fed's going to do? Now it kind of the, this run right here was okay. We're probably going to go into a recession, so rates were coming down a little bit. So it's going to be a real battle with rates going forward the next three to six months with the labor market slowing down. I mean, you know, you get you in, in this in this range here too. You had bonds. There's a lot of technical stuff going on with the short covering. Uh, there was some short covering going on. Basically, the people that sold bonds were buying them back. So there's a lot of technical stuff going on right now. And like the ADP numbers, I guess they're going to retool this number, this report. So it's going to be delayed. Uh, they're they're uh, retooling it so they can provide, a, like, I guess, for a more robust new view on the economy. So we're going to, but uh, I guess they're saying that me, they're looking for about you, a quarter million jobs. Let me ask you a question. Um, in, the, in, the, in the economic view, in your opinion, who's, Who's going to win the battle, the inflation crowd or the recession crowd? Hmm. So, in other words, the inflation worries are buying or driving the rates up, but you said recession worries kind of bring rates down. So, if you got two oppo opposing forces there. Which one do you think is going to take? I the think day? the recession, because I think the recession will pull the inflation numbers down. You know, okay. I think. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna see, if you see a slowdown, you're gonna see. I think that I think the recession numbers are gonna be the ones that prevail in the end because, you know, people people are not gonna go out and buy. You know, the, the demand on the on the demand side is not is gonna taper down, and which will obviously tap down the inflation side. So I think the recession is gonna be the one that's gonna win out. That's my, you know, fifteen. Well, that there's opinion. more than just the bond market uh, looking at inflation numbers too. I mean, look what happened to fuel prices this this week. Crude oil. Yeah, uh, because they're they're thinking there's going to be a global recession. They figure that demand is going to go down. So crude went down to what was it, ninety nine dollars yesterday? Yeah, yep. So and I think that's where recession's going to recession's going to trump the inflation numbers. You know, um, eventually. So what do you think that's going to force the Fed to do this month when they come out? Well, they're they're going to still. I think there's. I mean, that right now they're still saying. I think they're going to stick with their seventy five bips. They they have to stay strong because, like you said, I, I remember I said I said this five six months ago that they've got to start putting bullets in the gun to start shooting the gun. You know, the gun down the road because if you know they're going to raise rates. You know, they're they're in a in an inflationary uh, position right now where they've got to fight inflation and right. I think a recession is just going to, that's what they're shooting for is um, they want to get the inflation numbers down to 2%, but the inflation is not going to, I mean, once again, I mean, there's a word that I'm not going to use because I know YouTube doesn't like to use it. <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be a change, I think, in November, um, which is going to help. I think it's going to reduce, I mean, my personal opinion, like I found that what I've been reading and stuff is that I think I, that's my gut feeling. Like I, said, I go on psychology and look at the numbers and psychology and what people are doing, but I think, um, you know, if we have a change, that's going to give some people some hope because right now uh, these people are not doing anything to change any, the direction at all. Well, I don't so, think that uh, that the, that the Chairman Powell has any political pressure not to raise rates. So, you know, there's there's chatter that he's going to pivot because, you know, as he's getting towards the election, I don't think he gives one iota about that because he's not dealing with an administration that has a high approval rate. So he's not yeah. worried about disturbing that. You can't and, go any lower. They could pressure him all they want, but I don't. He, I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he's gonna pivot. I think he's no, gonna I, go I with think, 0.75 and keep going. Yeah, I think 0.75, and you know, I mean, they've got to keep going on that. And like you said, they're they're putting they're putting. I think my biggest thing is they're putting bullets back in the gun because back at zero, when rates were at zero, they had no bullets to work with. Mm -hmm. They had nothing to work with. I mean, what are you gonna do? You know, uh, stop. You know, they could stop the MBS you know, buying, but like you said, refis are down 90 percent. 90%. And that's, I mean, that's trillions of dollars that, that came out of the mortgage-backed security market, the supply. So they're not, you know, I think this, you know, they're, they're tapering down on the mortgage-backed purchases, I think, is a little bit more, you know, uh, more talk than anything else. I think, you know, they're tapering it down, but there's not, there's not, as I said, the supply is not, down 90% of refis. So that's huge. That's why huge. you have all the layoffs, right? 
Yeah, I mean, there's yeah, there's companies going. Uh, there's another. There's so, there's some non-QM companies, lenders that uh, first guarantee, and then there's the one called Sprout that went out of business here yesterday. Uh, these are non-QM. These are kind of like the new subprime lenders, and some of these guys, you know, they're just doing some wacky. You know, the ones that were doing some wacky programs are because <laughs> they got stuck too. The last two months, three months, they got stuck in the rate locks. Um, you know, they're, with the rates going up, that kind of squeeze them. And I think there's a lot of when rates go up like that, there's a lot of pressure on the lenders to do hedging. If they don't hedge the right way with rates going, the, you know, if they go like, like they did, um, you'll see companies, you know, and that kind of goes all, you know, you see people, oh, the market's crashing because these lenders are going out of business. They probably just didn't hedge the right way. <laughs> if you hedge the right way, you should have been okay. Well, I saw that headline this morning and said Sprouts was uh, was going under, and I was so disappointed because I like that grocery store. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a lender. Called that is Sprouts. disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, uh, the uh, you know, there's a lot you'll see companies going out of business, but like I said, you have to look to that. It was probably because they weren't hedging the right way, and they got stuck. So anyway, well, that's it for me. Ladies, what's going on in the marketplace? I know, Ruby, you said you kind of had one fall out and, uh, today. Yeah, actually, I just um, got official word about 15 minutes ago. So um, maybe 20, doesn't, whatever. But yeah, he lost his job. And uh, so it's a new build. We've got to cancel on that one and um, work on getting his earnest money back. So it's, it's really disappointing. They were about a yeah. hundred days. We we're supposed to close this month in about a week or so, and they're they're at least a hundred, hundred and ten days out um, before they're ready to close on the house. So buyer yep. losing his job and the delay of the market or delay of the materials and everything, it's cost him a house. Wasn't he planning on buying a couple? He was actually. Yeah. Um, we are we are looking um, to get the one closed and then um, purchase another. But I'm also, I was in the process of helping him find a, a commercial site as well for a fitness center. So that's on hold now too. Oh boy. So, yeah, lots, lots going on. So, so what's the, what's the feel out there? What's the vibe? Are you, um, do, do you feel like your buyers are, are sitting back? Are you sensing that, that more sellers are getting ready to, to list because they think uh, prices are going to head down? Well, I've got a couple things going on with that right now. I've got a, a seller that I've been working with, um, waiting on the tenant to be out. So the tenant skipped out on their last month of rent and left the place a disaster. I went and walked the property yesterday. It was disgusting. Um, so we're out probably two weeks before we can go active on the market. But um, you know, he was asking me yesterday, should I go ahead and just wait till August to, until I can get out there and put it on the market? and I, I told him you probably need to get on the market now. Our market is shifting. Not, we're not sure which way it's going to go. I'm, you know, not going to guess one way or the other. But um, we should probably get it on the market as soon as possible. So, um, with that one, we're going to go coming soon. And then as soon as it's, um, you know, painted and the carpets cleaned, if they're, you know, if they can be cleaned or salvaged, it was brand new when he put the carpet in last year and before the people wow. moved in. So it's kind yeah, of, I think if I had a rental, I'd never put carpet in. Right. Well, he didn't really know. He inherited the house from his dad oh, okay. um, who passed away. And so he was just, you know, he made it nice. We were going to sell it last year and then he decided to go rental. Um, but now anyways, so I told him, you know, we've got to price it right. We, It's a two bedroom, two bath. So, you know, it might be tough, but it might not be. It's got a swimming pool as well. So, um, and then... So that's my listing coming up. And I have a couple of buyers that I'm working with that um, when the rates dropped back down, they're super excited and called and said, the rates dropped. Can we, you know, start looking again? And so that's good news there. So I've, I've got both things going on. Well, Jackie, are you still seeing bidding wars? Uh, you know, it depends on the property. So I had one that I put in escrow last week uh, in the 800,000 range. It was a little unique because it had a 3,200 square foot workshop um, in Peoria, which I've seen a, a decent slowdown in Peoria and Cromford Market shows that too. Um, but, you know, honestly, 
so that one did have multiple offers um but we were still able to just come in five thousand over list price it was priced really well so the the seller was very realistic the agent priced it probably you know i could have seen it twenty five thousand higher honestly um i think the expectation that they thought the market was going to pull it up like it was doing back in march and april wasn't quite there but we did have to come in five thousand higher we were competing against a cash investor um, and then two other finance deals. So I had something else interesting happen. It's kind of a yo-yo out there. It seems like people don't know what to think or what to feel. So a few weeks ago, I had one that I put under contract in Scottsdale, North Scottsdale condo. Um, nice place. And we actually got that for 20000 under market. She was ecstatic. Um, it was priced appropriately for now. Because you can't look, you know, back at March and April numbers, those that they're fake. Yeah. They yeah. don't mean anything. Um, so you really have to try to go back and see if you can find something in the last 30, 60 days. I mean, 30, 45 days max. And then you've got to take in consideration what's active on the market, too. Mm -hmm. So when you're copying something, you're looking more at the actives right now in your competition versus looking at the sold comps like you typically normally would. Oh, I couldn't um, agree more on that goes to show you just how inaccurate these online estimates are going to be now. Oh, like yeah. Zillow. yeah. Yeah. Ignore and so it's, it's really having a strong agent and being able to educate your clients. So, um, but back to the Scottsdale condo. So, you know, we got a great deal. She was super excited. Um, and she took her contractor out there and suddenly called me and, you know, told me, I, I, I can't do this. I, I'm so unsure about what's happening. And, you know, we're never going to make somebody do something out of their comfort level. We consider ourselves knowledge brokers. We're here to educate you, give you the facts, tell you our best opinion. Nobody, nobody knows what's going to happen. Even, you know, back in January, February, March, we were telling our clients, this is what's happening now. Six months from now, who, who has a clue, right? Yeah. So, you know, she was very unsure. I did talk to her, you know, and just try to educate her on what was happening, what was changing, what my short-term expectations were and, and and told her i'm unsure because anything can happen i mean we're in probably one of the most volatile markets i've ever seen and so she canceled well suddenly this week rates are down and she's back and so we're looking at property again tomorrow so you know we had a conversation and she's like no you know i put some thought to it and sometimes you got to let people have that time in that space just to absorb because there is so much confusion out there right now i mean people are hearing so many different things and then um yeah. spoke to a new listing that we've got coming up um luckily they were referred from an agent in california and um it was a company generated listing and uh very open to understanding. I, I said, you know, the beginning of our conversation, I said, I want to inform you, we're not in the spring market and we have to be realistic. And so, you know, I said, my job is to educate you. And so I kind of laid out all the facts they were talking about getting the home on the market toward the end of August, similar situation, Ruby, mm -hmm. that you had. And um, I said, you know, we can do that. But if there is a way and we can help you somehow to get it on the market now, because we can at least see right now, but with how things are moving so quickly, telling you what I think you can list it for at the end of August, I, I would only be guessing. So, Yeah, and then tell me what you think of this too, because um, this is open door. <laughs> 1,254 listings, only 197 contracts, and they have 580 homes in shadow inventory. And I just interviewed Michael Zuber this morning and that will air on Sunday night. It was great. I encourage everybody to watch that. Um, but we talked about open door and the thing is, you know, I saw expired listings go from June 30th of 150 to July 1st to 500 expired listings. Right. That's because these, you know, their, their, their listing agreement was written to expire on June 30th. Well, these open door listings, they, they don't expire. They're going to have to get rid of those. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, I think that's worth keeping an eye on those homes specifically or coming yeah, in and offering them lower prices. What, what do you think? I mean, I think we're going to have to, I think they are going to have to drop their pricing or we can negotiate on those. I've negotiated several open door properties where they've paid way too much for the property and you go in and if it's sitting for a little bit, you can get it for less than what they've got it listed at a lot of times. 
Now, and I was then told this the week seven, that, that oh, on the, I'm sorry, on the buying side, I was told that their service fee is now 10%. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Yikes. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And, but 72 hours sold, not disparaging them or anything like that. But um, I've got two scheduled for Friday um, to show one of my buyers. And one is another one of those showings only on this date and this date with a two hour window. So I'm really curious to see how that one with the two hour window is going to be on Friday for, you know, are we going to have five groups? Are we going to have 20 groups or maybe we have one or two people through? I'm really curious to see how that one's going to go on that property or maybe no one. Yeah, exactly. 114, because 114 of the 500 expireds were that brokerage. Right. And one of the other properties, of course, yeah, I've really? got two I'm showing her on Friday. So they're both 72 hours sold or, and uh, the, the one's been on the market for 19 days. So we'll see what happens with that one. Well, like uh, all you, business models that change and, you know, and try something different, they, they're always going to have a, uh, a date where that program no longer works. And that one is uh, on the short leash. And I think uh, according to Zuber, he thinks that the iBuyers are completely out of the business in 12 to 18 months. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to hang around like they were pre pandemic. So you saw them here and there, and there's always going to be sellers that are in need and they weren't making money back then. I, they weren't, I mean, they were negative every year, but they were there, they were around. Um, one of the things I see though with them is that, you know, used to deal more with local agents with them. And now it's not. And so getting accurate information, finding out if there's current offers, things like that, it, it's almost impossible. That's I've heard different. that's real slow, that their listing agents are, are just overwhelmed. They don't have enough of them. So you can't get your, you can get your offer confirmed because that goes to a different department. But right. you can't get any of the details that you normally can when you call a listing agent. No. Right. Because no. there's no... There's Getting them, uh, getting to them directly is very difficult. Yeah. And you need real time information in this market. Right. And you used to be able, they used to have an agent that was assigned. You could get information, you could have discussions with them. And that agent stayed, but they changed the whole way they did things mm -hmm. during the craziness of the last two years. And mm -hmm. they can't continue to work that way. It's just not going to work. And you just but... unlock the door, walk in, and then just stay there and wait for them to call you. Hey, why are you still there? <laughs> right. Right. That might work. Well, I, I feel like we're going to have to get back to the um, the old school real estate. I mean, really, realtors are going to have to start doing their job again and working for their clients and getting out there and showing properties and and recruiting, you know, sellers and, you know, buyers and just staying in front of people. Just even like our broker said this morning in our meeting, um, you can't really use your cell phone for your pictures. You really need to take professional Please, pictures. Yes. You know, just do That's your job. Your, yeah. It's going to it's going to weed a lot of agents out in the next couple of years in the next 18 months. And unfortunately, I mean, the qual I when we have listings, we still did beautiful photos, drones, mm -hmm. videos. And the thing is, there's so many agents, it's like, I, I mean, over 30 years I've been in this business, I've seen it happen over and over and over. The market gets good. Everybody and their mother goes and yep. gets their license. And, you know, half these agents that were out there, they wouldn't answer their phones. The listing agents, you couldn't reach anybody. I mean, it was just ridiculous. They cut every corner. They were, I, I hate to say it because I love what I do. I love the industry. But there were a lot of agents that have no clue how to truly do real estate. And it's going to weed a lot of them out in the next year to 18 months. Or yeah, I think the biggest thing I've seen. Reading. Go ahead, Pat. Oh, the biggest thing I've seen is agents. I agree with you, Jackie, because I biggest thing I, we're seeing the same thing on the loan officer side. You know, you had loan officers that jumped in. To you're going to see a weed out period next 12 to 18 months. LOs that jumped in. Um, you know, the last year to two years. I saw on this one new loan officer Facebook Facebook group today. One loan officer said. I've got a $900,000 purchase and they're putting $300,000 down. What do I get paid on? The loan amount of 600,000 or the purchase price of 900,000? I'm like number one, you number one, I mean it, it just it's embar that's embarrassing. I mean, yeah. you're a loan officer. Uh number two there's 
nine, I was telling Rick, there's 90 people that responded. It's like, okay, <laughs> get the answer. Just move on. Okay. It's yeah. the loan amount. But I mean, you're going to see those people weeded out and it's, um, um, it's just the way the market goes. I mean, we're, you just, it's going to be a tough market. Like Ruby said, you just got to get back to work. I'm noticing driving around. I'm seeing a lot more open houses. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but speaking of that though, Pat, I'm in you know real estate groups on Facebook as well, and I uh, I try to avoid making comments. I just read yeah, me too for entertainment. I don't. The, there's there's one that was out yesterday. That goes, uh, my listing isn't getting any showings. Um, do you have any ideas on marketing besides the multiple listing service? I mean, oh God! Yeah, uh, it just, yeah, yeah. Here's an idea. Um, let your license expire. Um, and then <laughs> the other one is on weekends. And it's like, all right, everybody, how's your open house traffic? Slow. It's really slow. It's terrible. One group, two groups. And I'm like, it's July. It's the weekend right. of the 4th of July. It's 109 degrees. Yeah. It was slow last year. I mean, but they're, they're, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that the market is changing. And and, you know, on YouTube, I mean, people like to go, oh, you realtors, you're finally getting your come up. But, you know, we want this balanced market to happen. We yeah. really do. And and we're we're not, not chuckling that some people are are, are going to start suffering in their business. But we are saying, you know, step up your game. Right. Uh, right. I want to add to so, one thing is like Ruby was saying, I mean, just talking about experience, experience agents. Like I said, I the biggest thing I see is the agents that just do not know how to negotiate. You know, yeah. back in the last year, it's like. You just had listing agents put a house out. They get 40 offers. We're going to take the highest highest offer. And it's not always about that. No. And it's just like, you know, use your head. I mean, this is now this is it was too easy for the last two years. And now you got it from, OK, if a price comes down, the house has been on, how many days has been the house been on the market? OK, they listed at 850. You know, they've they dropped it 25 grand in the last week. Maybe we'll get, you know, there's there's a lot more than just one, two, three, you've got to put some thought into it. And that's where experienced agent is definitely going to, you know, earn their money. I was right. in an open house a few years ago and an agent walked in with his suit and he had a buyer with him. And as he comes into the kitchen with her to me and he looks at me and he, he starts telling me how the house is overpriced and <laughs> oh, it was overpriced for 15,000 looking around the point and things. And then, she walks in the back and looks at some rooms. I looked at them. I go, you don't need to show boat. I mean, you know, if you, if she decides to like the house and send me an offer, I go, but right. you don't need to come in and act like a hot shot. Right. And he yeah. must have been brand new. I said, he was just trying to show off in front of her. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, hey, leave me your card. He goes, okay. Because I wanted a card because when we sold it at list price, I wanted <laughs> to send him an email. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it. It's uh, like you said, to your point, Pat, negotiation, it's a, oh, gee, he beat me down. I guess I better accept his offer if he sends me one. And and there's, there's. It's an art. It's an art. It is. And it's it truly really is. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's an art that I, I, I've been on, I've been on the side of buyers and sellers helping agents uh, the last 10 years. I mean, I've closed some deals like just, you know, kind of listening to different people. I've actually, not that I get my hands in it, but I. I've actually helped some deals just because I've just noticed how weak some people are. Right. Yeah, I've asked you to make a call a few times. Yeah. <laughs> no. Can and you call? Can you call the well, I call. Yeah. I call to help you. I mean, you've you act. I think you're serious. I mean, you know, I've called and just you know, I can kind of. I'm just not a mortgage guy that sits and watches the rates and stuff like that. I'll I'll get involved. Like you know, I've had buyers say back when the market was when you had to bid up, you know, the price. And people say, oh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go ten thousand over. I'm like. I would, I think I've told you this, Jackie and Ruby. I said, I've called the, the buyer and said, Hey, how long have you been looking? You've been looking for eight months. What's your opportunity cost for finding the house that the perfect house that you've got? They're like, Yeah, you're kind of right. You know, I mean, yeah. you, you might not find that house. You know, it's like that red dress you put, you know, you went to the store and you said, I'm going to come back tomorrow. It's gone. Right. So, so anyway. Yeah. It's like shopping at Costco. <laughs> yeah. They move it, they move the stuff around. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, Jackie's so, so creative at that. Okay, yeah, Jackie's really creative at getting offers accepted and negotiated. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it can be fun stuff when you get the opportunity yep. to do it. So, well, I will yeah. see you all next week. Thanks for being okay. on the show. Talk to you soon. Have a great all week. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.